hello, it's Brandi Davison here. I am a design team member with the Scrapshots team. And today I am here with a process video using the November kit, which is um, founded largely on the Simple Stories Winter Farmhouse Collection. And you saw an image of my goodies there that I got this month to play with. So today I am going to be scrapbooking these three photos of um, the hockey rink or the skating rink that my dad um, makes every year at our farm. Um, he floods it, he does the plywood around it uh, one year, and well, some years he's put lines on it like it's an actual hockey rink, he puts lights around it, it's pretty amazing. So I wanted to create a layout that would give me lots of room for journaling. I tend to um, do my journaling just before things go in the album, but I knew I would have quite a bit to say about just my dad's dedication to going out there every morning and flooding it and clearing it. And yeah, it's pretty amazing to, to be able to say that when you go home for Christmas. I live in BC and this my parents live in Alberta. Is there's a homemade skate rink and you got your skates and stuff. So, so that's me there. I am just auditioning my paper um, in order to do a really kind of top heavy layout, if you will. And I wanted to kind of keep it in the, the nature of the farmhouse sort of collection, which is kind of a rustic farmhouse. And so I wanted to make sure I was doing quite a bit of ripping with this layout um, and kind of staying true to what the collection is. So um, I wasn't too worried about super clean lines and straight lines. I wanted to, to, to embrace the rustic there. So I didn't think that that plaid one quite popped enough off of the page. And so I pulled in one of the, the, dot, um, the dot solids that come with the, the kit um, that perfectly match this collection. So I'm just going to put a little bit of sequing at the top there in order to, to put that little tiny strip just so there's a tiny bit of yellow at the top and then it will be the plaid ripped and then the yellow ripped. And I could have um, just used a bigger piece of yellow so that it sat fully behind that plaid but I only got um, one solid piece of the gray. There's a green and then this mustard color and so I didn't want to waste anything sitting behind there. So um, probably one of my favorite colors in the kit so I was getting a little creative but you can see that um, well I might have cut off a little too much at the top and now I can't get enough of the yellow so this is going to be a little bit painful to watch because it was a little painful to go through you could tell I was doing this late at night because I couldn't quite figure out how to show more yellow um, and I take it on and off a couple of times so oops but anyway I do eventually get there and then you'll see that it's the yellow really does make that plaid pop a little bit more um, than just the plaid straight on the wood there. So I'm glad they kind of went through it, but definitely by trying to be cheap and not waste too much, I kind of made it a little bit harder on myself than it needed to be, so, but that's all right. So when in doubt, pull out the pencil and just glue it down and you'll figure it out. So here I am just gluing it down and I do use Suquang. I use um, liquid glue for any tiny spots or for putting my um, die cuts and or behind chipboard stickers and stuff. But I do, when it's big pieces of paper, I do use Suquang, which I quite like. I like that it sticks, but I do, when I'm using big pieces like that, I do miss that um, you can't kind of adjust it a little bit. So here I am, I finally had a moment where I'm like, oh, I could just rip the plaid a little bit and show more of the yellow instead of trying to figure out how I can make that yellow piece bigger, I can make the plaid piece a little bit smaller. So I don't know why I didn't think of that before. But anyway, there it is. And so I really like how that looks. And then you can see here, I'm going to keep all three photos right at the top. Two of them are of the skate rink from kind of different directions, and it's pretty big. And then one of them is the path that my dad shovels out from across the house in order to get to the skate rink. So, and I'll journal about how he puts hay bales out and there's a fire and uh, my our mom, you know, makes hot chocolate and chili and there's a big table out there, you know, a bottle of Baileys and all the good fun stuff that you need kind of sitting around the fire and the family playing kind of the hockey tournament and stuff. And our family uh, and friends tend to come over, not on Boxing Day, but in fact on the 27th when there's kind of no other obligations and work off their, their Christmas treats by uh, hockey, playing a hockey game and our attempts at figure skating and all that good stuff so it's quite fun so here I am just going through um, there's both the journal bits and pieces and the other bits and pieces so this is basically there's two die cuts that are available for the farmhouse collection and so I've got just both of them in that little tray there so I'm just going through and there are some die cuts in here that aren't sort of my usual style if you will um, and these are these little houses with the trees behind them but because I'm showing scenery and I'm talking about something that's at our farmhouse, it just, they seem to really work and I love how they layered. So that's what you see on there is ultimately what I go with is using those die cuts. 
there was a couple of things about skating, like a couple of die cuts and some stickers about skating. And I was tempted to put those on there because it is a skating rink, but I have other skating photos. So I didn't want to, where we're actually skating on the rink. So I didn't want to, um, I don't want to say waste them on this one, but I, I knew I would have a use for those, but I didn't know if I'd have a use again for these little houses, these little barn houses um, and the trees. And they just looked so good. So I thought I would stick with sort of that motif. So I have to say one of my favorite things about Simple Stories collections and their stickers and their die cuts, which they call bits and pieces, is there's always phrase, phrase stickers or phrase die cuts, um, which I just find so easy to place in those kind of those spots that are sort of a hole in your design, but you can't put anything big there and you just need a little something, something, as well as to just add a bit of sentiment to either the feeling or the topic that's in your pictures. And I just absolutely love that their sticker sheets come with phrases at the bottom. Usually there's a big chunk of them at the bottom, the big strip or two, and then as well, their die cuts. So love that about Simple Stories. So here I am, you can see, I'm like, okay, I've gone through the die cuts, thinking, 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 and now I've kind of looked at the stickers and then this is the chipboard and there is on the bottom the chipboard that is the same as these little houses you can see there's a row at the bottom they're a bit bigger but I thought oh that might kind of look like um, there's some dimension like you know the ones in the foreground are bigger and then the ones in the background so it might make it look even more like a bit of a landscape so I do play around for a little bit with those chipboard stickers here and there's three of them and I think five or six of these little houses in the die cut so lots and lots to play with in order to get some dimension there and so, of course, you know, as is usual, scrapbook style, I'm just going to move everything around a whole lot. So there I am. And, and then you can see there, I've kind of had an idea about the trees. Um, if I'm going to kind of balance that top heavy with a bit of a little scene at the bottom, I thought it would be good to bring a tree down there as well. So I end up moving the trees around a little bit and cluing in that, that one there that I had in my hand one whole half of it was tucked behind the photo so I cut it off no one would be the wiser and then I'm going to find a way to sort of strategically use it with on the bottom there kind of using another tree to cut off the the section that I cut off you can kind of get an idea there of how I how I did that and then that gave me you know kind of trees at the top and the bottom which to me kind of carried the design through a little bit and you'll see as well I've got three clusters I don't super focus on this um you know kind of the triangle a design triangle and always kind of have three clusters because it draws your eye to the center i don't sometimes i consciously think about it but often i don't um it just sort of seems to happen because it looks good like as you're moving things around it's a bit aesthetically pleasing so so yeah so it ends up happening and it works <coughs> sorry um yeah so there i am again playing with phrase stickers and you can see where my hand is. I'm like, oh, where do I put the title on this page? In my mind, I wanted to leave that whole section blank because I was going to go kind of after doing my photos and draw lines, almost the whole width of the page, a lot of them, and just directly hand journal all the way on that kind of that wood section area there. Um, again, I feel like I have a lot to say. There's a lot of memories attached with my dad doing this, so I wanted to leave lots of room. But then I thought it might look kind of good to do the title in the middle, sort of where that banner is, and then journal on the top and the bottom. So you'll see here, I sort of try and work that out. So when I'm trying to figure out titles, I'll often just take a piece, a piece of plastic, like off of the packaging or even off, I think this case, I actually cut this off the thickers package I'm actually using there. And then I'll just put the letters on, like just the tiny bit of the bottom of the letters, all the way across so that I can kind of move it around on that piece of plastic. Um, before it sticks on the page to get an idea of what it would look like and then I work on actually sticking it down. So I'm going to use dad's hockey rink as the title here. I know it's for the family but it's dad's rink. He puts all the work in for it um, and every day so it's you know pretty cool that he does that for us so it's okay to you know call it his rink even though we all use it. Um, yeah so you can see that was kind of my idea there in the middle and it broke up the space but then I'm going to audition it in a few places, and apologies that I'm leaning forward there so much, and my page is a bit off off the, uh, the camera there, but I do pull it down here and correct it shortly. And I think I could have done a lot of things. Like, I don't mind where that title is right there. Um, there we go. And I don't, I don't mind it in the middle. Um, I don't mind it like that. <laughs> it's not my favorite, but yeah, I'm just trying to, I think in a row makes the most sense. 
um, but for some, some reason in the middle there, it looks like it's floating. So you can see, I'm like, oh, let's try another way. So I do play, <laughs> as you can tell, a little bit. So then I thought, oh, okay, well, maybe the reason I hate it is because it's not anchored. So maybe I could pull up my little scene and anchor it. And so I do that, and that feels a little bit better to me. It still leaves lots of room for journaling, but you'll see I end up actually doing something different. Um, I'm going back to that plaid paper and that mustard color and just creating a little bit of a strip to, to further anchor the dad's hockey rink on as the title. And I think, too, for me, also balancing um, the, 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 all the pattern being at the top. I do like the top-heavy concept of the design, but it does, you know, with a little bit balanced on the bottom, it does sort of look like it's a little bit more finished. So um, that's what I do here is kind of try out these two pieces of paper and see how that looks. And I'm liking that. This is generally how it's going to look in the end. So, um, But I do determine that the, the black of those alphas are super black, and it's really the only black that's in the whole layout. So I just cut a tiny strip off the very bottom, and then I'm going to take a, a 12 by 12 piece of black cardstock, cut a small strip off of it, and I'm going to glue that behind just at the top. So that way there's a little strip at the black of, of, at, of the black of black at the top, and then that again kind of gives it that mirror, that balance to the bottom with the really black um, alphas. So I just use the, um, the measurement on my table there to kind of put my black at like, you know, inch one, and then I know where my paper should be at the top to make it a 12 by 12 layout again. And that I think, as you can sort of see, it gives that kind of direct balance or that mirror image. So I'm really happy with that. And then I decided to pull in a little bit more black as well. And I had already um, backed my photos in white cardstock, um, which I liked because it made that blue and the snow really pop out. But then I do go and back them in black as well. And I rough up the edges just a little bit not so that um, it looks too distressy, but it looks a little more rustic. And I find just a quick run of that. I use the Stampin' Up! one, but of the little uh, rough edge thing. Also kind of pops it off the page just the tiniest bit. Not so much as a foam dot would, but it gives it a little bit of dimension. So I like that. Then you'll see here that I decide, oh, I should pop them right up. And then I go through and cut foam for each of them, which I then later get rid of. <laughs> I decide I actually like them fine. And I just have a pack of fun foam. It doesn't have adhesive on either side. And that's what I use to pop them up with. So I have to cut it and I have to glue it on each side. And I've got a piece of gray and white. Um, I guess it's called like Baylor's twine from my stash there. That I thought, oh, that might look, might, might look kind of cool in the background in my mind. Like, you know, like when you skate on a new ice rink and you kind of get that figure eight sort of. You can see where your skates were. And I thought that might be neat. Um, but as you can see here on camera, you can't see it. And so even sitting where I was at the scrapbook table, it's not really obvious it there and it doesn't really look purpose driven. So I do end up pulling that out. You can see I'm thinking about it. Yeah. And I don't like the foams. <laughs> they, they look just fine the way they were. So I promise I will stop playing with these eventually and just start gluing things down. So I'm again back to what I had liked there. It's funny, you kind of feel obligated to see like what more you can do, um, you know, tuck this in here, do this, do that. And sometimes less is more. Like in this case, I didn't need that twine. Um, I didn't need the foam. Like it didn't actually fundamentally change the design. So, you know, sometimes keeping it simple actually does work. So, so here I'm going to eventually glue things down. I promise you. You can see I'm thinking. <laughs> Hilarious. Um, and I am kind of committed to using that little banner. I don't know why, but I think I just love it. It's got like little mustard kind of brown little banner on it and it's got little snowflakes and it's just so cute. And then here, I pretty much this is where it's going to stay is down at the bottom. I figure that I like it directly at the bottom. It's a great mirror. And then I brought in that, I think it's called gingham, the black and white heart, the cardstock heart, thinking it would balance it. But then on the sticker sheet, there's this gorgeous mustard one. You can see it there with a little bit of like a floral in there um, just on the edge. And I just liked it too much to not use it. The, the black and white gingham one would have been totally fine. But, you know, I liked the bigger heart. This is, this is a pretty near and dear to my, mem to my heart sort of memory and something our family does. So I go big or go home. And I just, the added mustard there, I think, just kind of provided some more balance to the other mustard on the, the page. So that's me just putting down the anchor. 
that one top one is sort of ripped. That's cool. The other plaid paper is ripped, so I didn't overthink it. It kind of looks purposeful. <laughs> um, and then that little seam there um, gets glued down, and then this is this is it. It stays down there. So I recognize, like on camera, it doesn't look like the dad's hockey rink is super noticeable, but when you're looking at it like in the actual album, it really is because those alphas are just so... Like, they're so black. They're so good. Yeah. I could definitely have a few packages of those in my stash, and I would use them up, that's for sure. So, generally speaking, if you put the alphas on the very, very edge of the plastic, you can kind of hold the top down with one finger and then just slide the plastic out. But, strangely enough, these are probably the stickiest um, chipboard stickers from American Crafts I've ever gotten. Like I wasn't capable of doing it and usually they kind of fall off the plastic even and you have to end up gluing them down on your page. So I don't want to complain because that's quite nice but usually it's a little bit easier to put those down and I don't have to individually do it. So here I am gluing, right? <laughs> so this means it's going to stay. So you can see I use a fine line bottle and I use um, Scotch Quick Dry. I kind of go between that and Tombow. I really like the Tombow Mono Liquid. Um, but the nozzle on it is pretty thick, and I find the price point of it to move it into the fine line bottle, I feel like I lose a lot of it, whereas the Scotch Quick Dry has a, a, a bit of a cheaper price point to it than buying the Tombow. Um, but I've only kind of switched to that in the last few months. It seems to be working. Um, I haven't gone back in my albums and found anything kind of sitting at the bottom, so we're doing all right. <laughs> so. And I use quite a bit of it as you can see but it comes out quite thin so I, I feel like it goes pretty far I probably go through you know one bottle of glue every few months and I scrapbook every day so that's pretty good in my mind and if things aren't sticking or if they're gesso or mixed media then I do use um, quite a bit more because I find that's when it doesn't work and that was a sticker I used what I tend to do with stickers is I just put a little bit of cardboard um, behind them, like a, or cardstock behind them, so that I can move them about. I kind of turn them into die cuts. And I know you can kind of rough them up with um, that embossing, the anti-static thing as well. So that's what I do. So that is it. That is my layout. Um, I think what I do um, to finish it off is I add some Tim Holtz Tiny Attacher just to the top two corners there and a little bit on the bottom. And then I do go through and audition a few of those fray stickers. And you can sort of see the sticker sheet off the side there. That's the rows of fray stickers that I just love that are on every Simple Stories collection sticker sheet. And they've got, you know, the colors that they're on and the writing, it, like, they just absolutely match the collection. So they're so easy to use. And they just kind of fill those little spaces. There we go, just auditioning a few. All the words are great. It's just a matter of the colors and, and if you can see them. Especially with the plaid there because it, um, it, it's, it's pretty busy. Um, so I had to kind of purposely pick the right colors to go out there. And here's me just auditioning a few more little things. Oh, and pulling things off. There we go. I think that stays. Oh. I hope you guys are like this too, just moving things about. And it's funny because then I come back and I'm voiceovering, like doing, I don't think that's a real word. I'm doing this voiceover on the video and I don't know why I moved it. Like it looks just fine. <laughs> but yet here I am moving it and moving it and moving it. And then probably half the time it goes back to exactly where I originally had it. It makes me laugh. But anyway, um, and then we, with the kit as well, you get half a package of the enamel dots and I'm a total enamel dots girl. So I'm just going through here. Oh my gosh, I just moved it again. <laughs> that is hilarious to me. <laughs> Please let me glue that down. Okay, good. <laughs> you don't have to be subjected to that anymore. Um, yeah, so I just go through the um, collection and where the there's a little bit of a cluster that are touching the wood grain, I add a couple of the enamel dots. And again, the colors of the enamel dots exactly match um, the collection. And you can see, I just slid them back in the half package and then I do use my Tim Holtz to kind of close the package up because I find the enamel dots tend to, if they're rubbed about too much, they kind of slip and they're so small I'm never finding them again and I would be heartbroken if I lost my enamel dots. So because these are snow pictures, I do like to put a little bit of acrylic white and this is just like cheap acrylic white that I bought at like Walmart, a couple of sprays of water, um, some cheap paint brushes, <clears throat> cover my photos and then I just spritz it on. So I am just kind of 
taking the wettest part of the acrylic paint, like where I added water, filling my paintbrush a little too much and just flicking the paintbrush. I don't worry if it's big splotches or little splotches. I mean, it is what it is. It's meant to look like snow. Every snowflake is different. So that is me. That is um, the layout. And here's some stills off Crown Mara. I did go and add a few black splatters again, just to balance that black. Thank you so much for watching. Um, lots of these goodies are still available on the Scrap Shop store. Um, please check it out. The link will be below. And I hope you guys are having a wonderful November. Mm -hmm.